Boomers and Zoomers, super welcome to today's video. Guys, today we're checking out all the indie FPSs that were showcased during any of all the summer showcases. Sounds pretty neat, right? Let's do this. Finally, finally we have a release date for Witchfire. This is a game I've been keeping my eyes on for a very, very long time. And it's coming out in early access in September of 2023. However, it will be exclusive to Epic Store, so keep that in mind, friends. So when shopping for the game, use the code in the description, okay? Thank you. Now, this game was actually meant to be out already, but it's been going through somewhat of an overhaul, especially in the level design. Previously, you were locked into an arena when entering a fight. But those locks have now been removed so that you are free to move as you please and this brought forth other issues that was tricky to solve, hence the delay. But I'm glad that they're taking their time and making the game as best as they possibly can. Nonetheless, this game looks absolutely phenomenal. It's a semi-open world roguelike from the developers of Painkiller and you can really see the Painkiller DNA in the gameplay of this one. It's hard to point the finger on exactly what is similar to Painkiller, but it's clear to me that it is from the same developers. It's like there's just small things everywhere, from graphics to movements, that just reminds me of Painkiller. And to top that, the combat looks really, really satisfying. It looks as though the guns will have the required punch, and the feedback from the enemies getting hit looks to be spot on. And sprinkled on there, the graphics. Mm. They have created something here with the Unreal Engine 4 that is just absolutely gorgeous to look at. I'm definitely down for this roguelike punchy magical shooter. Are you? Let me know down in the comments. Now we have to discover the quiet dystopia of Fortunes Run, where food is free, yet people starve and every living soul of New Zebra is bought and paid for by off-world interests. A classic first-person shooter with undertone of role-playing in the spirits of Deus Ex and I Divine Cybermancy, featuring the campy tone of space operas and titles like Metal Gear Solid. This is looking to turn out into one of the most ambitious retro shooters that I have seen in a while. The graphics, they are really unique in this one. And the sprites, it's like something I've never seen before. They look so smooth and yet so edgy and I absolutely love it. Now the demo that is available on Steam has just gotten an update. I have yet to play the updated version of it before making this video, but the demo that was before the update was one hell of a ride. With some amazing melee combat, yeah, believe it or not, I just said that melee combat is great in this game. Even the role-playing elements felt good and I kinda got into it because it was so well implemented in the game. Now, I can't help myself but getting some crazy underdog Star Wars vibes from this game. I'm sure I'm not alone on that, but make sure to give the demo a spin before its full release and let me know if you're getting the Star Wars vibes as well. As a late 19th century brine-punk engineer, you're recruited on an expedition to explore the sub-aquatic ruins of an ancient civilization. However, your mission of discovery turns to one of survival, as the sunken kingdom's corrupted inhabitants make it clear that interlopers are not welcome here. This is another roguelike game, with many things resembling Witchfire, but in another setting. The graphics, they look to be quite similar, the gameplay doesn't seem to stray that far off from each other, but what first caught my attention in this one was actually the graphics and the art style. I really like the Brian Punk fantasy underwater design to the game, and then all of a sudden, it seems to be somewhat a fast-paced roguelike, and mmm, I'm just liking this more and more, and then it shows some kind of modifications to the weapons, and I'm assuming those are upgrades. Being a roguelike game and all means you have to get stronger as you go, but I like the fact that it somewhat changes the appearance of the weapon. I hope in the end though, it will change even more than what was shown in the trailer. I for one cannot wait to explore this Atlantis-inspired world and kill some alien-looking things along the way. And perhaps dying a few times, because that's how the cookie crumbles in most roguelikes. Now this is yet another one I've been keeping an eye on since before it turned into the monstrosity that it is today. Originally, this game was also meant to be out already, just as Witchfire, but something happened along the way and the game got some funding, which meant that the team could grow and along it the game as well. So that means it's been delayed into 2025, but instead of releasing for just PC, it's now releasing for consoles as well, which is really neat, and I'm really happy for my console gang out there. 
Noteworthy though is that Switch is not included. But what really makes this Dino game a little more exciting to me is the fact that it seems to implement a little more slow paced action trying to bring out the fear of actually battling a dinosaur. And sprinkled in, we got some exploration and adventure. On paper that is exactly the formula I want for my Dino games. Now if they can deliver that, only time can tell. And for those who follow the channel, well then you know I recently got a little frustrated with a game that was trying to do the same thing but didn't really nail it. So I'm really hoping this gorgeous looking game can fill my emptiness of a Dino Crisis first person shooter. Now do you think it has what it takes? Let me know down in the comments. My hopes are high but I'm still skeptical as we have a lot more to see from this game. Now we got the game that I just did a little preview on, the adrenaline filled dopamine rush that appeals to me in so many ways. I'm of course talking about Mullet Mad Jack. The game is rocking some sort of 90s inspired anime art style to it, while on paper that does not appeal to me at all, but on screen it just looks so gorgeous. In this game the humans have merged with the internet, and people they struggle to survive, so much so that you only have 10 seconds to live if you don't replenish your dopamine. And how do you refill your dopamine in this game? Well, you kill stuff as fast as you freaking can. You play as a mullet mad jack, rocking the all famous mullet hairdo, out to stop the evil robots in this new internet meets man world. And the combat and gore just looks right up my freaking alley. The guns and finishing moves seems to have that punch that I'm so desperately seeking in every game. And the ill red blood just tops the punch of it in such an appealing way. And if this is starting to pique your interest, well then head on over to my video on the channel where I covered the damn thing. The Send to the Depths of Sulfur, the first person shooter combining action and role playing elements. The game will have you outsmart your enemies, find treasures, improve your arsenal of weapons, harness different powers and a bunch more from the looks of it. At first glance, this game did not really caught my attention due to its very friendly cartoon style. However, the more I've seen it and read up on it, the more I'm starting to like this. This seems to be a quite unique adventure, but there is some things that I am concerned about, for example, the inventory management. There seems to be quite a lot of it, at least judging from this trailer, but of course it's hard to tell from just one trailer. Other than that, this seems to be somewhat an intense and relatively slow shooter sprinkled in with some comedy and I kinda freaking dig it. I especially like the character design and how they interact with one another. It's almost like they're growing on me the more I actually see them. Now it clearly features a lot of RPG elements and comedy as well, but my hopes they're kinda high that this will be a fun but pretty unique experience that we don't see releasing that often. Now where do I even start with this one man developed game? It's truly one of the best, if not the absolute best, one person developed game. It has fast speed, crazy good level design, incredible weapons, a vast array of different enemies, vehicles, train level, bosses and somewhat an interesting story about rogue AI. Now in the showcase we get to see a glimpse of the final episode of the game, episode 3, which will conclude the game and finally put it in its well deserved 1.0 release. The first part of episode 3 is already out so if you're keen on starting your journey I'd say go for it now. It's not a short one by any means so you will probably be done by the time the second part releases. And the first part of episode 3 actually contains the majority of the episode. Now the game it is set in a cyberpunk world and you play as Johnny Turbo, a man with a chainsaw attached to his leg. As freakishly as that sounds I love it and with it you can skate around like you're on a skateboard and just slice up everything that stands in your way. It's a thrill ride worth the experience to say the least. Ferocious, my friends, is a first person shooter that combines a sense of wonder of exploration, a mysterious prehistoric island with over the top action gameplay. And of course, it features dinosaurs, and some really good looking ones at that. But that's not the only thing you will be fighting in this game. There will also be some armed guards standing in your way of you and your survival. According to its Steam page, your adventure begins after a shipwreck in the Pacific Ocean, where you awaken on the shores of a deadly island. As one of the few survivors, you must navigate deadly encounters with prehistoric creatures and armed mercenaries. 
uncover the dark truth hidden with this enigmatic landscape as you fight for survival. And in my ears, this is sounding like a more fast-paced action dino game than the one I mentioned earlier in the video. Which is fine, and it looks incredible, almost like a darker modern Far Cry game with dinosaurs. And honestly, I'm super down for that as well, but it is not the ultimate dino experience that I'm looking for. Sand is a vast open world PvP PvE game where you explore the fallen planet of Sophie. In Sand, players are thrust into desolate deserts of the fallen planet Sophie, embarking on a quest to uncover resources and treasures. To navigate this harsh terrain efficiently, players are provided with the ability to design and modify their own trampler a walking, gigantic mech capable of traversing the island that were once submerged beneath a vast sea. Your Templar is your base. So very little was actually shown in the game here, and this is all the footage that there is unfortunately, so I don't want to give up much of an opinion on it just yet, but the graphics, they look really nice. I love the Trampler and how that is your base. It sounds like a really neat idea. However, I am not a huge fan of the PvP PvE genre, never have been and probably never will be. But please do let me know in the comments what do you think about the PvP slash PvE genre, aka extraction shooters. Bloody hell, another mighty impressive solo developed game, Road to Vostok. Road to Vostok is a hardcore single player survival game set in a post apocalyptic border zone between Finland and Russia. You get to survive, loot, plan and prepare your way across the border zone to finally enter the Vostok. Now honestly, this is not really the type of game that I cover on this channel, but I still think it deserves a spotlight here, being one of 10 indie FPSs shown in all the summer showcases, it definitely deserves to be here. So this is truly a hardcore survival sandbox experience with realistic weapon mechanics, advanced survival systems and hostile NPCs to say the least. Featuring multiple medical conditions, tactical weapon handling, permadeath elements and in-depth character simulation. In other words, a super cool game but absolutely not for me. Something noteworthy though is how engaged the developer is in the community and really listens to the feedback. I've been following its development since version 1 of the demo and how fast this solo dev is reacting and fixing things based on feedback is remarkable. It is an achievement all in itself. Now could this be the best looking Unity FPS ever made? I don't know, but it sure as hell is one beautiful beast. So if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. And for love of freaking everything, drop a comment down below. Which game is your favorite? And for even more awesome shooter games, well, don't miss these.